CPI at 3.1%, definitely a cooling down, but how did that filter into expectations for the economy overall, especially as we deal with all of these recession concerns? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. And and uh, you're right. There's more to the story than uh, than than inflation coming uh, coming off its highs. Again, to start with, this is a survey of about 30 uh, chief econ chief U.S. economists, uh, uh, member SIFMA member firms, uh, large broker dealers, asset managers, and investment banks. And the consensus view of the survey is that we'll see uh, CPI, core CPI, and and, and PCE uh, uh, back off its highs uh, going into the end of, of 2023. But at the same time, uh, while the the consensus of the group is is predicting ending the year at uh, with GDP at a, at a 0.3 up, uh, that that we're looking at GDP off uh, at a negative 0.3 uh, for the year uh, uh, next year, and a long-term projection or long-term GDP trend of between one and two percent growth rate. And in addition, uh, the group uh, uh, believes that uh, we'll see uh, unemployment uh, start to uh, uh, Pack back up uh, uh, in, into the four, in, you know, uh, from 3.7 at the end of, of 2022 mm -hmm. up to 4.5 at the end of 2023. So, uh, you know, so, and, and lastly, I just say uh, the group doesn't think we're in a recession right now, but uh, the vast majority believe we will enter a recession in 23. Uh, a little difference on timing and 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 strength. Well, what what are their expectations on that strength and, and the severity of the recession? So 89% of the respondents think that it'll be mild, uh, and and uh, and and 60% 60, 60 think that it'll occur in the first half of 23, and then turn around after that. And Ken, I'm looking over at your notes, and you list risks to economic forecasts, and both on the upside and the downside, you list inflation. Can you walk us through that? Right. So uh, you know, we just had a, a, a briefing with our the chair of our of our uh, of our group, uh, Lindsay Biegs, uh, who's the chief economist and managing director at Stiefel, and and she was talking about you know different factors that could come into play on inflation. Uh, the, you know, you, you have sort of the the you know the main drivers of inflation around supply side, demand side, and labor, and there are different factors that are going on. Some that can be affected by uh, some that can be affected by monetary policy, particularly things around aggregate demand. Or, or pulling back on aggregate demand, or slowing down aggregate demand, I should say. Um, uh, supply side, you know, not all those factors can be driven through monetary policy, and some of those are driven by geopolitical issues. If you think about what's going on in China with COVID, or in, in uh, 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 the R Russian invasion of Ukraine and the impact that has uh, uh, across commodity markets, yeah. uh, and then the labor markets are obviously continue to be tight. And do you end up in a in a uh, you know in, yeah. a, in a spiral, wage spiral? I, I am curious. I mean. I at least as far as the market is concerned, they kind of feel like they, they think they know what Jay Powell and the Fed is going to do. I think one wild card that keeps coming up is about fiscal policy here. And of course, given uh, your background, uh, your, your work on, uh, not only in the private industry, but of course on the Hill uh, back in the days, I am curious as to whether you think uh, whatever agenda we get out of this mixed Congress, meaning a, a split Congress between Democrats and Republicans, is that going to end up being meaning, is that going to have some sort of meaningful impact on economic conditions or on market perceptions? I guess, are we headed towards another fiscal cliff, towards another big budget battle like we saw in the 90s, like we saw in the 2000s. So these would be my own views, not necessarily Sithma's views. Um, I, I think that, you know, I, and I, I can't predict the future. I guess what I would say is based, if, if history is precedent, and I think it is, when you have divided government, um, the likelihood of, of an expansive fiscal policy, I think, is pretty slim. So... Uh, I would think that we are likely to see a consistency among fiscal and monetary policy, a tight monetary policy for some period of time as the Fed continues to increase rates. And that's what our group believes that they will do with a, with a, a share, thinking the upper bound could be in the five and a half uh, uh, terminal rate range. And my own sense is with divided government, it's just very hard to see an expansive fiscal policy uh, 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 going forward. I could be wrong about that. Uh, mm -hmm. That's not you know, that's up to policymakers to decide. And Ken, while we have you, I'd love to get your thoughts on the state of the Treasury market, because one of the byproducts of the Fed's tightening, of quantitative tightening, has been that liquidity has deteriorated in the Treasury market specifically. And from your vantage point, do you think that there's any market structure reforms that are needed at this point? 
Well, obviously, this is a topic that the Treasury Department is leading on with a number of agencies. We represent the primary dealers, among others, and large investors in the Treasury market as well. And Treasury market's the primary market you know, that affects all others. Um, the, you know, I think there are a number of things that are being looked at, and I think that you know the first thing is that we need to be very careful how we how we uh, address this. Uh, there is, a, you know, one thing we need to take in consideration is if you look at primary dealer balance sheet over the last several years, it's been relatively flat. At the same time, we've had exponential growth in the amount of treasuries outstanding. Certainly, a lot coming out during the pandemic, and, and with the government's desire to you know help carry you know carry the economy through. The pandemic and the shutdowns. Um, and part of that is due in part to uh, some of the uh, uh, prudential uh, reforms coming out of the great financial crisis, things like the supplemental leverage ratio that we think the policymakers should look at. They, in fact, suspended some of that with respect to treasuries during the pandemic. So that's number one. Number two, obviously, uh, uh, the Treasury and others are looking at things like central clearing, mm -hmm. all to all trading, uh, uh, who can have access to the standby repo facility, and then uh, increase uh, data transparency. Yeah. And again, our caution is be very careful how we do this, that we don't that we don't impact liquidity in a negative way in what is a primary market.